So here we go, game three. Absolutely love the start of this draft. Finally, they leave, they decide to leave up the Jacks. It, of course, does get picked in blue one, and they answer it with Silas Ash, which this right here, this is the core that I'd love to get in every single draft. If I'm drafting red team, this is what I want from R1, R2, because it leaves you super flexible. You get to play not only with Silas uh, in the mid lane and flexible to block a lot of the ultimates that are coming out, all of these team fight ultimates tend to be very explosive for Silas to pick up. Uh, also, it gives you the flexibility of having what I consider to be the best carry in the metagame right now. Uh, not not just because she's dealing plenty of damage on her own, but because she can fil facilitate the team, because top lane being strong uh, in this position is so incredibly important, and because you need to be able to support your team at level 6 to get the Void Pit. We see the Nar again. This time it's going to be Jax into Nar, and, and this has been, you know, Bin versus Bin. We'll see whether or not Doran can take this to another level, whether or not we see any kind of play that's used to manipulate. Uh, we talked about the differences in the execution, whether or not we can actually finish that dive against the against the solo weak sider. The first game, it was a good job zoning where they stepped so far forward, Elkanon did, where they kept Alistar away from the turret. And then by the time the Nar teleported over, he didn't have... The resources right and so blg just steamrolled that game from that position there was no nothing given up on the other side this time it was a little bit closer but rumble surviving the dive these teams are showing that they have adaptations ready to play against that dive strategy and and so far i think blg's looked a little bit better with them however they needed to execute last game we'll see if they do it this time Big ultimates, Zeri ultimate is actually huge for Silas because of the AP damage, you can get a lot of it done. This is interesting that we see Nocturne being played with Zeri. I wouldn't always expect this because this is so much dive. Zeri can join in on the backside dive, but this is gonna be dive, 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 potentially dive. So is Zeri just supposed to run around in circles or is she going to jump in with the rest of the team? If she decides to jump in with the rest of the team, then now suddenly you're talking about all of these stuns hitting you in the face. So I don't, I don't think that that's going to be the plan. Uh, I don't know if we're going to... I mean, there's plenty of damage on this team, but is the fight going to run away from Viper? That's my question for this. All right, delayed invade into the into the path here. Nar is on a reset, so if they actually have... If they have this scoped, and they know that Nar recalled, they could actually take this fight, but it looks like they're not going to try to do it. They do get a ward down. Now, this is in the meta where you're still getting experience for, for wards. So that little bit, that's the difference between hitting on wave one versus hitting on wave two if you're a solo laner. And it's uh, a minion faster for level three if you're in the duo lane. So these guys, oh, Viper with a quick flash already. Ash is so strong here, guys. Like you can't, you cannot stay here. You went into this lane swap into versus Ash and Rakan. Now Rakan's not that strong of a champion. You do have to be careful about the remount play from from the rel for the all in. Like if you go too far, Rakan can't really commit the W in some situations. But uh, right now with this HP lead, any amount of continued fight means that Ash is going to be heavily, heavily favored. So this is this is spelling doom for for HLE right now. They are in a really bad spot. The question is going to be, do they have a punish ready? Nocturne's going for three camps on the blue side, so he could go for this, but notice that you already have that ward down. Uh, they will have insight to that, and it looks like Nocturne's just going to go cross map into a power farm. Uh, expect him to go Raptors, Krugs, Red to try to get the resets on the mini camps. The mini camps, taking them a second time and passing through mid, gives you your ability to hit level six at the fastest possible window. Now, Wukong's happy to do the same thing, right? It's saying, all right, you want to power clear towards six. I'm willing to power clear to six as well. And then I'm just going to let you come to in, come to us, right? You're going to ult onto us. Well, I've got Wukong, I've got multiple Cyclones to drop in your face. Hold on, we've got Ari into Silas. Aggressive trading, good job. By Zekka. So Wukong's going to let it happen. Again, you have this like sort of front to back delayed... Uh, delayed, brawling, you know, step back, kiting sort of team where you've got heavies in the front. Rakan's going to join up with them. Ash is going to be lining up behind them. They don't need to commit to any fight. And in fact, they don't really have the best way to reach for a fight unless it comes from a flank, right? You do have all the Silas options, right? So you could make them tanky. You can make them jump the back line. Again, jump the back line, or you can play front to back. 
Uh, or if it gets in the middle of a big fight and you think that it's just going to be dive versus dive, then re the Rel and Jax ultimates are going to be fantastic in those spots. So they're more than likely not going to try to like steal Nocturnal and just turn this back on them. They're just they're just going to say, hey, we win the brawls. Let's just brawl. You want to move on to us? We've got this Rakan. The danger is what are you going to do about Zeri if she gets big at all? All right, Nar, Nar has himself a little bit of an advantage, as you're supposed to have in this matchup. Jax goes for short trades with the Grasp here. Uh, sometimes you'll even see Fleet Footwork in this matchup, uh, just because it's so hard for Jax to get anything profitable out. But basically what he's going to do, every time he has Counter-Strike up, he's, he's going to be willing to jump in, Counter-Strike trade, get a Grasp trade off, fight for a couple minions, and rinse, repeat, do it again. Doran's shield, let myself heal back up. That's that's how Jax is looking to play it. Nar is trying to stack up as many grasps as possible and poke this Jax in the face as much as possible. We go here. We see a little bit of a play, but it's a little bit of a bait. Heal down and they reposition. Now Wukong, level 5, is going to have the base stats here with his passive to feel really strong. Uh, but Ash is really the one that's carrying this fight right now. Ash is the premium champion pre-6 and level 6, right? If you're talking about which which AD carry would I like to, like, make plays and skirmish with, it's always going to be this. If you don't have access to, like, Callista for just the sheer out-damage potential. Elk took, taking a tower shot there. That's You don't want that. You do not want to trade resources like that when you're in such a big leading position. Nocturne's going to be hitting six, but it's going to be on the other side of the map, so Ash does not need to feel concerned about it. Let's see, they're starting to move Rakan and Wukong together. Ash tries to get this push. Now, this right here is a preemptive roam timer. I absolutely love this movement together. Ash is feeling healthy enough, but it really shouldn't be. Um, is still just on the Dorn's Blade. I'm concerned for the Ash right now. They have gotten a rebound for themselves. Maybe what they're trying to say is, hey, we can hold on to this position and basically force Zeri to be the one to go first. But Zeri, Zeri already has too many items, so she's feeling okay right now in this position. And she has the cleanse and flash available too, so she's feeling really strong being able to push into this, which means that BLG actually has to give up the priority here for the grub. So I don't know how they ended up in this in this spot. It feels like Ash should have found a way to get back into base, uh, maybe getting a little bit greedy with the... Uh, freezing sequence which is something that happens a lot if you are not careful if you try to freeze and the enemy team already has a prepared aggressive play they say okay congrats like walk the lane back there that's where i want you to be anyways because i'm gonna go take the void grubs so a little bit of an imprecision there from blg i wouldn't even see a little that's that's something that you probably need to fix going forward in the in the in the series All right, now they are going to trade Dragon here. It looks like Nocturne actually skipped his bot side, saying that he wants to go for the respawn on Wolves and Blue, which should be enough. That will be level 6 for him off of those two camps. And importantly, he'll have the blue buff for the lower cooldown. So there may be a moment. They're going to start picking a fight on the blue side. You see this? They're taking this fight as Nocturne hits 6. So you're trying to get chunk down. Wow, it feels like they could have gotten a pick there. It's so hard to jump on Rakan because of double dash range. Let's see, do they go for it again now? This has to be it. This all right, there you go. They committed the dash. Now you press the R. You notice how they waited. All it took was one spell forward is all it took for HLE to pull the trigger. And this right here is because they thought the jungler was on the bot side. I can guarantee you BLG thought that Nocturne was pathing this way and that it would take him another 30 seconds to get into position. So that aggressive trading should have been a hallmark or should have been a herald that the play was on and BLG should have adjusted, but they didn't. They get punished expertly done by hle you notice that the moment that rakan used his w to go forward was the moment that both these champions pressed their r it was that and that's the level when you want to exploit you wait for that play you you collapse on the mistake they don't know it's a mistake yet and only once they press the button are they doomed so really really well done by hle uh, blg leaving a lot to be desired right now and especially elk elk has he missed one of his timers. 
and now he's weaker now, right? He's playing on this is still just on Doran's blade, right? He's getting super greedy for his first for his first buy. And uh and it means that they end up trading a significant amount back. You know, tanking the turret as well, like super, super effective there. So what are you doing? All right. So a lot of nervous jitters right right there. Remember, when you're a coach and you're watching a series, you cannot affect the game at hand. You need to be thinking about game four because game three is done. You have no effect on game three. You've already taught your players what they can do, whether or not they're going to whether or not they're going to get this win or this win. You can't control it anymore. It's out of your control. So don't get super emotionally invested because then you might make tilted decisions. What you should be always thinking is from an analytical point of view, what's next? There's a great clip of Larry Bird in a game where the Pacers come up with a shot that goes in and they take the lead with 1.4 seconds left. The entire arena goes crazy. Reggie Miller goes crazy and he's like, yes, yes, and starts like dancing and spinning around. But Larry Bird is there just thinking. Because as a coach, it's not your job to get excited. You can get pumped for your players and you can try to pump them up. But it's your job to think about what's next. Okay, there's 1.4 seconds left. They're going to get a shot. We know it's going to MJ. Let's set up our, our defense. Right? So we're already thinking about the next step. That is what a great coach will do will do for your team. All right, looks like it was a short pause. Just a uh, peripheral issue. He is ready to play some League of Legends again, and we are ready to watch him. Back onto the Rift once more. Zeka going to continue clearing out that wood. All right, so HLE looking really good. They don't have too much of a gold lead, but you can't say enough about where it is, right? Zeri and Ari being the ones who jump up ahead, and the fact that Ash has owned one this bot lane. Basically, you're relegating these guys into just full support mode. For the rest of the game that puts all of the pressure on silas to be a carry and that's not the easiest thing to do right you need you need fights to already be blowing up you want you want to come into like a really messy situation as a silas and be able to blow up with your aoe uh if that messy situation shows up then it might just be curtains for your team already that said ash is the best carry in the game to play from behind because you can just play super safe you can play back you can just cast your w's and and hope for like a static shift proc here and there like th those little bits of chips on damage can be the difference between whether or not you get in and out of the fight now what i don't want necessarily from this ash is for them to continue down like a kraken slayer route because if they go if they go kraken slayer for example then you're stuck where you are the weakest player in the entire game and you're trying to deal carry damage it's a dicey situation. Do you, do you just abandon ship and go straight for the support of like Black Cleaver, Runon's Hurricane split? That's something that is always available for an Ash. They can always audible into that spot. They might may decide that hey, no, we still we're going to need every bit of damage when they come into come into our position. We need to be able to hold them down and still be able to rip someone apart, especially if it's this guy. So you may still see Phantom Dancer uh, come out from this. From the Ash, because they feel like they need to be able to reposition in a fight versus a Nocturne who's diving them. It's a little bit of a trap because you can never truly get away from this combination, especially if they go for the Stride Breaker, which is the most common uh, build for Nocturne. But who knows? We, we don't know exactly how they're going to play out. You see the beginnings of the items coming out. You're going to see spikes here from HLE. Specifically, this one is going to be a huge playmaker. And Zeri is super comfortable right now. So on 12 minutes, they're going to feel comfortable enough to, to pressure for this dragon. Uh, this is a little bit earlier in the game than BLG might have been expecting. They were probably hoping to play for and win this with Zeri not being ahead. But the fact that Zeri is where she's at with a full static shiv and we have the malignants already from Ari, it might be a little bit of a scary proposition uh, with only the rocket belt being picked up here. BLG more than likely is going to be happy to play off of the Trinity Force spikes. So if they can delay this dragon take for just a little bit and play for Trinity Force, then they'll be happier to fight. But most likely what we're going to see is dragon going here. Then we're going to see Triforce in time for the Rift Herald. 
and Triforce plus Boots, Boots 2, is enough of a spike for these teams to contest and try to fight and, and make their stake on the Void Pit. So HLE is going to start coming up with a plan. How do we punish this, right? The team fight's coming. It's coming around this pit. They have, you know, this wall. We have options for approaching from two different angles uh, on top of a potential for top push and then come down, although that one's much more tricky. Uh, and there's no progress done on the mid lane turrets, right? There's one plate down a piece, you know, not even one down here and barely over one here. So it's going to be hard to find that angle to definitely, like, block off or stone the enemy team with how many angles they can approach at and how many people are happy to be the flanker. So they're going to want to be very precise, HLE, with their wave control. They want to make sure that if they're being contested, that enemy team is losing waves, right? So you're going to see mid lane prio, top lane prio. They're going to focus on this. Ari's down bottom, though, with no teleport. So if BLG is looking for a window, this is absolutely it. If you can finish these two Triforces and be super aggressive, you'll take it. Uh, Knight realizing that he can be strong here. Has the Ari ultimate. Now, he might be willing to slide over. I don't want to take see him go any further here. I want to see him rotate up right now. Ari's going to have to recall, and she's going to have to recall and run straight there. If she does anything but that, then they're going to be punished. BLG saying it's too late, though. We don't have enough momentum. Uh, looks like Nar just recalled, so he probably has his Triforce as well. But they, this is what we talked about from HLE. As long as your lanes are in an adequate spot, there's not going to be enough of a punish. Nar goes for a recall. Silas gets a good trade, but that's it, right? He's just going to take it for this wave. He's not even going to stick around for this turret. The reason being that if he sticks around to take this, then he's going to take a long time to have to retreat, and Ari will turn around and get a counter turret. He doesn't want to do that. He instead wants to get his recall. He's going to come straight back down and play for it. Now, with Rift Herald in pocket... Here for the Nocturne, what we see most often is this push and then this winding path to try to take this one as well. And we've seen some structured defenses ready to do this, but uh, Knight did not place any wards in preparation for this play. So it looks like they just won't be there. Silas is deciding instead to just defend. You see the pings right now already on the bot, bot side turret. They don't take the... All right, so they don't take the Herald across. They're deciding to go for the Tier 2. They're saying si they're more likely to give us this tier two. You don't always see them go for it. But like we said, there's punishing. When you go that deep, not in this video, but we talked about it earlier in the tournament. When you go that deep, you leave yourself open for counterplay. BLG is there and ready for it. And Knight is going popping off right now. He has another ultimate stack or no? No, he's done. Okay. Been not quite enough. Rakan's looking to come in. There we go. Backside. Our big ultimate from Jax. It looks like it hit three people. He's going to be really tanky, but it's not going to be enough. Great job by BLG. This is what we talked about. If you push this turret and then continue, because you don't have this, the enemy team has a lot of areas to attack you from that you might not have prior vision of. Most people would rather take this and then wind the Rift Herald through mid and punch here as well. Mid lane turret is generally, this is the most important turret in the entire game to get down. It opens so much of the map for them. Looks like he was trying to mount onto the onto the thing right there. That would have been his way out, by the way. Buying a little bit of time, you get a couple extra cooldowns. You see the reposition in the fight. Ash is finally joining in. And this is what we we're talking about. Remember we said Ash was the best carry in the game from behind? That's what we were talking about. You can be the you can be the weakest player in the entire game and you cast one R and you can change the entire script of what's going on. So huge play for them. They do catapult into the gold lead, and this puts them back in the game. They they were basically going to get buried in this game if they weren't careful. Uh, but now they've got both of these outers down. They set a trap here. They got a kill for themselves. Now they might feel strong enough to go for a play. Wow. super important that he's able to escape dragons up in 31 seconds if you die right there then you're giving up the dragon as well on top of all the gold plus the rebounding waves now if you're blg don't be disappointed 
And the moment that you stop thinking about how to grow and like how to progress in the game and how to problem solve, then that's when the other team jumps ahead. If you stop and say, oh man, I wish we had got that kill, we didn't get that kill, that's living in the past. So always think forward. They're taking the positive. Okay, okay, he used everything to get out. Get out. That was his ultimate counter-strike. He jumped out. We know he's going to be recalling. We can take that momentum and push it up further, get a little bit more, get top prio, force the enemy team to come here and answer, and now we can still be in a position and still get something. If they just retreat and say, oh man, I wish, I wish our play had gone better, you may not get this. But instead, they continue forward. They have force and answer here, which means now they're also getting Ari's teleport, which means so they've gotten a lot more resources from the play and they're still here in a position where they may want to take this fight. Now, the question is, do they actually want to versus this Leandries? I don't think so. But uh, Ari, you know, Silas picking up the Ari ult is, is a big deal. He's got the ability to dash forward, triple dash and get uh, consolidated fights. Ash being the setup. The Cyclone being super strong in these fights. Um, more resets here. Knight just carrying on the Silas, dude. Silas is so incredibly strong. I... In play-ins, I gave some some teams credit for hiding picks and saying, hey, like let's hide this until we're in matches that really matter. And while that could be the case, I don't know if people would necessarily want to do that in Swiss and risk going into knockouts, but we had that read on, on Silas. It's like this champion should be the premium pick in the tournament and because it is we should start seeing more champions like sejuani forgive my uh weird graffiti cursive but silas uh showing showing how strong it can be but hold on a little bit over press all right this is a dead this is dead silas now what are they gonna get they've just got vision lines there's nothing really else to get for it so this delayed death means that also the baron should be on the table here how much gold do they have in pocket? They must have a lot. Let's look at the what Nocturne's buying off of this ruby crystal. He's had the experimental hex plate for a long time. All right, let's look at the team fight position. Front to back, Jax would like to be on a little bit more of a flank. This is where the Ash is showing all that benefit. And they get the effect on Jax, and they know that Jax has no ultimate, right? So a little bit, slight misplay though. They could have won that by even more. It looks like they tried to split up to try to start repealing and get more, uh, guarantee the kill onto the carry. But the thing is, Jax has this uh, one pesky ability that stops carry damage from hitting him. Bin being the best Nara in the, in the world, maybe. Saying, hey, do you wanna do you wanna move up into my zone as I'm going as I'm going crazy? Like so hard to approach from just this angle. Now, interesting map, right? We have the mountain map, which is going to favor this team that wants to be dove into, right? Silas wants long drawn out fights. You have double conqueror. The double conqueror is going to like it. Plus, you have HP stacking with Graspier. They are going to love mountain stacks. Not only that, but it gives more terrain for the NAR to throw into, and it also gives more uh, distinct corridors that allow champions like Rakan, Ash, and Wukong. So this right here, let it not be underestimated that this should be a huge adjustment into the game plan. Pop the Ash. Now that is the weakest player on the team, so what? what is the consolidation, right? What are you gonna give up? We do have Nocturne taking one back. Versus Ari, they get a kill back, they get returns. All right, we've got Zeri dead and Ari dead. So that's a net win from BLG. Gold ahead of Doran on a side lane. 3,000 gold ahead right there. This guy's hard carrying. He's like, if, you're, if you are catching anybody but me, it does not count. Remember, remember the uh, previous game when it was 18 minutes into the game when we were just finishing Triforce? This game there had two completed items at 22 minutes. Slightly different narrative. Look at this position. You peel off a little bit. You accept that Ash is going to die and you continue the fight here, right? They've used all their resources. You say, all right, we continue. We've got Conqueror. We're going to be really happy in a spot like this. Now, it is late. You see that he teleports at the very end of this. He teleports in with, with decaying Mega.
Absolutely. Looking like he's doing it. Now we're going to see the combination. We see the Nars do this all the time. Wits End on top of Sterics, Gage, and Triforce. Stacking tenacity from items, not from the boots. That way you get the most defenses from the boots. You get the most tenacity from your items. And super good synergy from the item set. Looks like they might even get a second one. Wukong might try to do some, something similar, but this is much more likely to be like a Merc Treads. Now, Cosmic Drive being able to slide around in the fight. Silas, mobility is the one thing that gates him from being able to get all of his damage out. Cosmic Drive gives you the access to do that. We'll see whether or not the next item becomes something like the Lich Bane, or if he starts going into the tank shredding already. Oh! Ships passing in the night. That was wild. <laughs> wow. Wow, Doran, if it was, I mean, we're, we're going to give it to him full credit for being on purpose, knowing that that was his way out. Jeez. Cutting it close. All right, check out these ward lines. All right, BLG feeling very strong. One, two, three, four, five. We've got control wards, three control wards. So this entire area, we call this star coverage. When you put out star coverage, it's saying we are living and dying by this area of the map. We're going to control this quadrant if we can. And by layering two different spots and wards, you end up with the deep line and the shallow line. So you know when people are going into the into that zone, but also if they try to exit and do anything aggressive, you're gonna have the head start on them. This is good coverage when you're preparing for a dragon or if you're gonna start preparing for mid prile and then trying to control this area more and try to get slightly better wards and be able to take some of them away. So expect HLE to try to hold these ones here because it's really good defensive uh, line of scrimmage for themselves. They've set up this line that they know enemy team's not gonna be going any further. And that's a decent answer. So are they going to play front to back on this side? Silas has teleport. Uh, looks like he's going for as much of a push as possible. Jun is going to be willing to bait. Bin's going to be willing to bait. Rakan's going to be willing to bait. They caught the Ari again. Right as Nars flipping. So he just jumps over the wall. Flashes to get the stun. They get both kills to lean off. And now we have two Mountain Drakes. They are not going to try to coin flip anything. This is also going to be a Baron, by the way. Three Dragons, and, and really the best combination, right? If you're going to have three Dragons, these are the three that you want. This is uh same narrative as last year. This guy, top diff. Doran, Doran is a great player, and he's been playing above expectations. But Bin is the best top laner in the world, and there's something there that's allowing him to go. It would be really good uh, if we can get some pro view and, and really keep track of what he's doing in these lane phases. We'll give a shout-out to Coach uh, Chippies. He, does, he has access to the pro view VODs, and he does a good job of breaking down what these champions do, what the, how these players are playing the matchups, and he just did a video on Bin. He did one last year as well. It'll be really exciting to watch what he what he comes up with with this matchup. Make sure you guys check him out. I can see it because of the fight. I don't like this arrow right here. That's a little bit of a weird angle. It's always going to split. But cool. It's a uh, short cooldown, short-ish cooldown. Mid prile sliding over, top prile sliding over. Uh, Wukong pathing towards the bot side, so a little bit of a syncopation right here. Rakan in a really aggressive spot based on where the Wukong is at. Uh, they have teleport available, and the Nar is raging out right now. So this would that that would have been the window. HLE may not have known it, but that was the window to try to jump on the Rakan and try to get something out of him, get his flash at the very least. And if you can get his flash, then maybe he doesn't have it up for this Baron fight. Uh, but they didn't realize how how weak the Rakan was. But that's one of the things that we have spoken about with what is the next level. If if League of Legends is being played at a 2500 ELO level, what does 2700 look like? Because there there comes a point where leveling your opponent and doing things that are unexpected just gets beat by what is the best play. But if you can shake up their tendencies where they can't just do the best play like in chess it's not not all the information's on the board all the time 
right? There is, there are hidden variables. So if on realizes, hey, three of my champions, even though they're nowhere near here, they are in fog. So as long as they're in fog and I can assume that my enemies don't know where they're pathing, I can play aggressively. We're winning. I can step up. So this position by by the Rakan, even though he had one member here, one member here, one member here, only Silas was showing on the map at that moment. And so you wonder, enemy team has to wonder, is this the trap? Like, are they trying to bait me in for the fight right now? I don't know if I can take this Rakan because if we spend any amount of resources on a Rakan, like, we absolutely get blown up in the fight. So very, very smart play i love seeing these adaptations and and recognize them and give credit to these people for it they know this is starting to become more and more of a known quantity of playing playing with supposed strength playing with range advantage if you want to use the poker term the fact that i am under the gun raising means that i'm strong right the fact that i'm standing on your beach as a support means that my team must be strong right and if you do it all the time, then maybe a, a scout or, or a good game plan can punish you for it. But as long as you're using it in the right spots and you're being not predictable with it, then there should be some answers or there should be a lot to, to gain from those. So the biggest thing it does is it buys time. Your split pushers are going into the side lane. We've got level 16s across them. We're going to try to get it from the Ash as well. Uh, Ash is a champion again. Now, Infinity Edge, I'm not sure. A Ash is a weird champion because they have a, they have a differentiation, like they have a different effect on on crit strikes with the increased slow being being measured by their by their criticals. So I'm interested by this Infinity Edge. See them moving as five, right? Consistently moving together, making it so it's hard for a Nocturne to find any kind of angle. This is, the way this, is what, this is where we talked about too, like in the draft, combining these two champions is very, very difficult. Now, if you can blow up and get that first early fight, then you you can find something, but you need to get that you need to get that first kill onto a carry. It needs to be, it's not gonna happen on Nar. They try to get onto Nar right here, but you just move to the side. All those resources being blown. He has teleport, so and he's just raging out right now. So he still has access to his ultimate. He may just look to recall and then come right back to this fight and take the rest. Uh, expect them to go and play strong, especially through the Silas here. Hammer to Anvil. Give the dragon. Yeah, they're going to give dragon and just take the fight. But they, they have to get this position. Hold on. Elk was just ripping into the jacks while he had Counter-Strike open. He just empowered the effect. But look how strong Knight is right now. And he's dodging the Rel in the middle of that hardest choke in the entire game to dodge with. Look at how well he's fighting this, guys. Still dodging. Guys. Silas with Ari ultimate. Remember, this Ari was picked as a counter pick. I believe Syndra was on the board, too. So, I mean, again, all right, all right. It's the it's second time we've we've had to catch ourselves right right here. Zeka does not want to play mages, and this becomes a big weakness if you're not willing to play a certain class of champion, and that's the read on you. Then there might be a, an opportunity to to get exploited. And right now, this Silas pick, knowing that Syndra's not going to come out as a counter, is a problem. It's a big problem because Syndra would be that cl that classic canonical like I can poke you out. I have an ultimate that is garbage for you. You can't use the utility from it. You don't get the extra damage from it. We would love to have that ability, but if they don't have it, because Zeka doesn't have it, then then you have a big problem. And if that's the case, then you had better be first picking Silas. Pick Silas. Give them Jacks. Like don't don't care, because also Doran accomplished on Nar, right? Like, you're fine to play Nar into Jax. I don't think that there's an iteration in this draft that can't start with taking Silas if you're HLE. And right now, like, that's their that's their win. First pick Silas. Alright, big gold lead. Ocean double dragon. I'm glad that they gave the dragon to take the fight there. They say that's okay. Buy ourselves time. Nar's gonna come back into the fight. They're gonna be panicking over his reset timer, so we're just gonna move up. 
and Knight just played out of his mind. The fact that he was able to continuously dodge using his E, repositioning, rocket belt, staying ahead of the fight. Vin is gapping Doran right now. This is this is a fake item as well. So this is like three and a half items to two, right? It's not even like this rod and the Seeker's Arm Guard are both barely doing anything right now. So we're talking about a full item and a half lead here for Nar over Jax. Uh, means that there's no real counterplay to Nar being in the, in the side lane. Pushing by himself. You may look for him to go for the hammer right now. Hammer to Anvil. No, they don't want to reach into this part, especially if they don't have any of the vision yet. You see that their line... See this? Boom. They're connecting. They own everything else on the map, but they don't own this one quartile. And this is good defense. If you're if you're playing professional defense, you say, I want to control one area of the map and make it as hard as possible for the enemy team to, to aggress into it. I would have liked them to make their stand there. It feels like they're just going to bleed out right now because now, even if they make this play, with all the resources that are down and the fact that the Baron went down, now they can go back and just collect everything and snowball their lead even more. Call it a 10k gold lead. Uh, expect to see the recalls right here. And yeah, that's exactly what they do. By not taking the fight, that was your best chance. Go. JK, they hit a ward in there and they punished them for a bad recall split. Okay, they proved me wrong. Good job by HLE. Sort of like a fanatic bush without being in the bush. They had to time it perfectly, and you have the best tool in the game for punishing a mistake like that. So Ash is down, but there is no prize. All right, 38 seconds. Ash will be up in time to get there in position for this. So yes, you do get the kill, but it's not an important one for your team. And you see that she's picked up Seeker's Arm Guard to try to keep herself alive versus the, the repeat later in the game. We have uh, low damage builds here. Sustain, 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 sustain. Yeah, you're staying alive. Everyone, everyone's on this like stay alive plan. Are they gonna have enough damage to to kill a conqueror Silas? I don't think so. They're basically all their all their eggs are in this basket. It needs to be Silas dying to Zeri, and anything else just doesn't work. This Randuin. Well, Randuin has the AOE slow on top of it. I don't like the item as far as its stats for this game, but the AoE slow could be something that they want, especially since they're trying to get Jax, Ari, Ari into good positions. Boom, spike, 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 spike. The, 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 no, there's no way BLG loses this fight. They just take first fight that they see and they force. The items, the items are too far multiplied. Hold on, a little bit of an overreach. If Peanut survives here, then they can win this fight. Look at this, they're overcommitted. This is sort of what you wanted. He's going Mega. GA is going to allow him to go Mega, which means that they get to continue this fight. Now Ash is going to get it. Let's see if he jumps into the middle of the fight. He doesn't have Flash. He does have Flash. There it is, Flash into the wall, and they get enough. Guardian Angel. This is the point in the game, and this is the only point in the game that you ever buy Guardian Angel. Twenty-seven seconds on death timers. You do have a wave here. They may decide to tank this up. There is a cannon here. It's post thirty-five minutes, or sorry, post twenty-five minutes. So there's always going to be cannons in every wave. Uh, they may try to end here. It's just Nocturne and Rel that'll be up in po in position to stop this. This minion wave is going to show up as they're approaching the base. Uh, it's going to be close. They definitely win if they don't go for this. But I think that they have it right now, knowing that it's just Rel Nocturne. They can push. This is a little bit risky, you know, within a within a frame of a couple seconds on maybe being being able to turn something around. But it's perfectly calculated. They had two seconds to spare, and uh, they get it done. Well done.